A very warm welcome to everybody who are with us now or perhaps are listening um, later, watching later on YouTube. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Francesca. We say our opening greeting together. That's on the, on the next slide. Thanks, Francesca. We come to worship, to worship you today with open hearts and minds. We want to hear and receive what you have to say to us in this service. Speak to us today as you spoke to those who went before us. Tell us the stories of your wonders and greatness. We are ready to hear them. Remind us once again of your grace and love. Help us teach your goodness to our children and the next generation. Amen. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. Let us turn to the light and confess our sins. We say together our confession. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service, strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to our time of worship now. Gary, bless you and thanks so much. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's sing together. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. By His good is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever. For the life that has been brimful. 
Amazing Grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is strong and so much stronger? The King of love, the King above our kings. Who shakes the whole world? With that thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of Love, the King above our King. This is amazing grace. This is a thing love that you would take my place. That you would. that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into art who makes the author a son and daughter the king of love the king of love who rules the nation with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of his brilliance the king of love the king of baba king this is amazing grace. This is a thing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing all that you've done for me. Worthy is the land of slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the land of slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Oh, worthy is the land of slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the land of slain. Amazing grace, this is a thing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, make 
down your line That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing All that you've done for me Jesus, I sing All that you've done for me Oh, man, bless you, Gary. This is amazing grace. <laughs> this is amazing grace. Oh, Jesus, you sing, sing for all that you have done for me. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Gary. Thank you so much. Audrey's going to bring our reading today from the NLT, the New Living Translation version. So, Audrey, if you want to unmute yourself and bring us today's reading, please, I'd be loved. The reading today comes from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be the apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Sosthenes. I am writing to God's church in Corinth, people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always give thanks to my God for you because of the grace he has given you through Jesus Christ. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now, you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Bless you, Audrey. Thank you so much. And Jane, Jane Carrington is going to bring us God's word today. Bless you. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Stephen. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you will take my words and find them acceptable and speak to each of us through them. In Jesus' name, amen. So Advent, a time of expectant waiting. It means coming and arrival, a time when we pray, prepare to celebrate the coming to earth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. A journey. It's a time of looking back and remembering what God has done for us, taking time to prepare our hearts for the season, but also a time to look forward to when Jesus comes again. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth and picks up on that idea. The church there is mainly a Gentile church. We know from Acts 18 that Paul had lived in Corinth for a year and a half, working initially as a tent maker, which was his trade, and preaching in the synagogue. His message about Jesus being the Messiah and Saviour was not accepted by most of the Jews. So Paul then moved next door and started preaching to the Gentiles, many of whom came to believe in Jesus. So this letter is written mainly to Gentiles and to all people everywhere who worship Jesus. Paul calls them and us God's holy people, a title that has been used just for the Jews until Jesus came. Paul is looking back grounding their faith and ours in, with the rich history of the Jewish nation and all that we read of in the Old Testament, including the promise of the Messiah who would come to save them. We can only be included in that through coming to know the person of Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and through his sacrifice of leaving his Father in heaven and dying on, for us on the cross. Through Jesus, we have become part of God's holy people. 
Paul's greeting is common to his letters, asking God and Jesus to give grace and peace. But what is this grace? Paul is asking God for the Corinthians to be given it. Then in the next verse, he thanks God that they have received it through Jesus. And a lot of our songs today have been about grace. But if we can have the next slide, please, Francesca. There's a chorus that we used to sing that sums it up, really. Only by grace can we enter. Only by grace can we stand. We can come before our holy God, not by our human endeavour, but by the blood of the Lamb. We can't earn it. It's only through Jesus and his sacrificial death that we can come into God's presence. Into your presence, you call us, you call us to come. In a lot of translations, verse 9, God has called you into fellowship with his son. In the reading today, it says God has invited you into partnership with his son. And into your presence, you draw us. And now, by your grace, we come. God is active in this. He draws, he calls us. Lord, if you mark our transgressions, who could stand? If God looks at our failings and our sin, no one would be good enough to come into his holy presence. But thanks to your grace, we are cleansed by the blood of the lamb. We can come to God through Jesus and know that when we truly confess the things that we've done wrong, that God will forgive us because Jesus is there in heaven with God speaking for us. We have an advocate in heaven because Jesus died and rose again. We don't deserve that, but Jesus suffered once for all in our place. So that when we confess our sins to God, they will be forgiven. It's through this grace that we can then receive God's peace, his perfect peace that does not depend on circumstances, but it's overwhelming quite often in the midst of difficulties. Next slide, please, Francesca. Have you noticed when someone is first in love, the name of the person they're enamored with comes up frequently in conversation. It just creeps into every few sentences. The person is in their thoughts all the time. And when we read this passage, we see that with Paul, Jesus is absolutely at the center of his thoughts. In these nine verses, Jesus's name is mentioned nine times. <laughs> He looked back and reminded the Gentile Corinthians about how they are now part of the Jewish heritage through Jesus. Now he points out that the church at Corinth is blessed with all spiritual gifts that he mentions later in this letter in chapters 12 to 14 because of their union and belief in Christ. As a church, they have been blessed and Paul wants them to learn more and keep constant in their faith. But he's writing to them because... He's had messages about disagreements between them, and they were also continuing to live Im immorally. When we become Christians, we come with a lot of baggage. A lot of us still have a lot of baggage. When someone starts believing in Jesus, often the way they think and act changes. Some people change the way they live quite quickly, but for others, it's a long journey for God to impact their lives. And this is what's happening here with the Corinthians. Paul is encouraging the Corinthians and us to remain focused on Jesus in everything that's going on in the present. and To remain strong because God is faithful. When things are going right, perhaps it's easy to remain strong. In this time of challenge and different way of living, we're all impacted to a greater or lesser extent by what's happening presently. And it can be a challenge for all of us. Sometimes when we pray, God graciously answers our prayers and we rightly give him our thanks and praise. But what if he says no to what we are praying? Does that mean that God is no longer good? When Paul is struggling and in his weakness and frailty, he prays that the thorn in his flesh will be removed. We don't know what that is, but we do know that God pleaded three times with God to remove it. And God's answer in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 was, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. How easy is it to remain strong when things aren't going right? Where is God then? God's answer to Paul gives us an insight. When we feel strong, we often rely on our own resources. God wants us to rely on him for our strength. Paul and we cannot rely on ourselves. We need to turn to God. Grace is blessing or favour from God, despite the way we naturally think and act, our sinful nature. God withholds his anger and wrath from us in his grace. He has given us eternal life that starts when we accept Jesus as Lord. So when life is difficult for whatever reason, and there are so many people struggling in so many ways at the moment, if we turn to God in the midst of our storm, it might not change the circumstances immediately, but it can change the way we think about them. When Jesus and his disciples were in the storm on the Lake of Galilee, and the disciples were afraid, Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves to be quiet and still. He can do that for us too. One of the presenters on Premier Radio yesterday talked about how the eagle will know if there's a storm coming and will fly high and wait for the wind to come. When the storm hits, it sets its wings so that the wind will lift it above the storm. And that's what God can do for us in the midst of our storms if we let him and lean on him. We have so many things to be thankful for. The fact that we're gathered now shows that we have homes that we can go to. We still have the ability to meet together with others, to come before our God through the marvels of technology. We can keep in touch and encourage families and friends. We have food, clean water, access to medical facilities. We have so much. It is through God's grace that we can find his overwhelming peace as we lead up to Christmas in this strange time. Peace that passes all understanding, a peace that doesn't come from happiness of a situation, but is overwhelming despite of challenging situations. Grace can help us with disappointments, uncertainties, sadness and loss. During the first lockdown of this virus, many enjoyed being out in the open air, in gardens, going for walks. Robert and I were fortunate enough to be able to cycle around the countryside, seeing the odd car, but no planes flying overhead. We were able to appreciate the beauty and sounds of creation in a new and different way. It was enhanced with the reduction of pollution, the amazing bird song, beautiful colours of plants and trees and insects. It allowed us to slow down and appreciate nature, but also little things in life that we often take for granted. It gave opportunity to become more aware of God in the peace. Perhaps this Advent and Christmas time, when life is possibly different and less frenetic than other years for many, it will give the opportunity to have a different focus, to listen to God's still small voice, to thank him for his grace, to receive his peace, the supernatural peace that comes from God alone, a chance to look back and to reflect, to thank God for the blessings of each day, to ask God what he would have us to be and do each day. And to eagerly look forward, not only to this Christmas, but also to what God has for us until our journey on earth finishes or Jesus comes again. God will keep us strong through faith and fellowship with Jesus to the end, because God is faithful. May we know his presence, love, joy, peace in greater measure and come to him in a new and deeper way this Advent season. Amen. 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 Bless you, Jane. Thank you so much. So much. More aware of God. <laughs> and listening to his still small voice. What great words. 
be encouraged this Advent time. Thanks, Jane. Bless you. We come now to our time of prayer. And we're going to begin with the collect for today. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our prayers today are broken into three sections, globally, nationally and locally. And when I say in this time of Advent, please respond with, we look forward to your coming. In this time of Advent, we look forward to your coming. Globally. According to the Civil Unrest Index, there are five top nations, Burundi, India, Libya, Yemen, and Syria. But there are many nations in the midst of civil unrest. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this time of Advent, we look forward to your coming. Nationally. November has seen the prayer for the nation. Lord, we cry out, heal our nation. But you call us to humble ourselves before you in your word. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Lord, we declared earlier our repentance when we said, we are sorry and ashamed to repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. May the truth of those words continue to echo through our lives. Lord, heal our nation. Pour out your spirit on this land. And taken from thy kingdom come. If you receive those emails, this came on Friday. Praying for our local and national governments and for the regions as we come out of lockdown and return to the tears. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, we turn our hearts to you. In ages past, you have delivered our nation from disaster. Do it again, we pray. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to our leaders. Give strength beyond human strength to the NHS and all our frontline workers. Give comfort beyond human comfort to the elderly and all who grieve. 
Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days. Turn your face towards us, have mercy upon us, and heal our land, we pray. In this time of Advent, we look forward to your coming. And locally, today sees the start of Advent, the church's first day of the year. But it has been a challenging year for all. And for many, it has been filled with one of loss of work, bereavement, loneliness and worries about the future. Father, bring your comfort to those who need to feel your loving arms, your uplifting support and your ever presence in their lives, both this day and through this Advent season. In this time of Advent, we look forward to your coming. We pray for those in our congregation and known to us who need your healing touch this day. Speak your breath, Father, into their body, mind and spirit, that they may receive your healing in its fullest and praise you and you alone. And we lift those who are bereaved in this so very sad time. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers. Searching for answers. Searching to feel valued and loved. The God of love, Jesus at the centre of our hearts, as Jane shared with us earlier. Fill us with compassion for the poor, those in need and those who search for the truth. May we shine with your light before others and bring glory to your name. In this time of Advent, we look forward to your coming. And we come now to the prayer that our Lord taught us. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 